streaming live now on News8000.com. You're watching WKBT Lacrosse. This is News 8 Now at noon. Good afternoon. It is Wednesday, May 31st. Thank you for watching News 8 Now. I'm Sophia Pullman. Let's get to some news today. Minnesota is officially the 23rd state to legalize cannabis for recreational use. Caroline Cummings has the answers to some common questions such as where and when Minnesotans can buy. A big celebration for cannabis legalization inside the state capitol Tuesday as Minnesota embarks on a new reality many years in the making. This is not only getting this bill legalized, it was an exercise in democracy. The 300 page bill is the culmination of a lot of work and it was one of the final bills approved this session. Its signing also marked the meeting of governors past and present. Former Governor Jesse Ventura cheering the bill to an early and prominent advocate of legalizing marijuana. It's very wonderful to see a dream of yours over 20 years ago finally happened today and I'm still alive to see it. Now that the bill is signed into law, what's next? Well, there are key timelines to think about here. Starting August 1st, it will no longer be a crime to have up to two pounds of marijuana in your home and two ounces on your person when you're out and about in public. That's also the date when the state will start the process of automatically clearing people's records if they were convicted of low level cannabis crimes. So when can you buy a marijuana product? at a dispensary? Well, that'll take a little bit longer, 12 to 18 months, bill authors estimate, to get the regulatory framework up and running for the rules, regulations surrounding the cannabis products and the state licenses you'll need to run a cannabis business. As for where you can use it, the bill says at home, at another private residence with the owner's permission, or a place licensed for on-site consumption. Local governments can set rules about where in public it's prohibited. I'm really proud that Minnesota is taking a step forward and trying something new. The bill legalizes recreational marijuana for anyone over the age of 21. Let's head over to Derek for our Wednesday forecast. All right, thanks for that, Sophia. We are under an air quality alert now here, and uh, those areas that are shaded here coming up on the screen does show where we do have some of those air quality indices that are expected to reach the unhealthy level, especially for those sensitive groups that you may have that, or that you may know as well. Try to keep them inside if you can. People with breathing issues, children, older adults, and people who are active outdoors should reduce the, those uh, prolonged or heavy outdoor activities. This does include La Crosse County, and this is in effect until 11 p.m. tonight. In the meantime, our current temperatures are into the the 80s, 86 in La Crosse, 87 in Eau Claire, 79 in Winona, 86 degrees currently in Sparta. Temperatures in Basquiatville, 88 degrees. Prairie Sheen at 85. Satellite and radar picture looking pretty quiet. A few clouds here across portions of the area with some light showers near the Wabasha County area. As you can see outside, we are looking at that partly to mostly sunny sky. Hot temperatures today, especially this afternoon around 5 o'clock, expecting highs to reach around 90 with that southerly wind breeze at around 5 to 10 miles an hour. I'll be back with a check on your full weather forecast coming up in a few minutes. We'll talk about some upcoming possible rain chances later this week. Sophia. Thanks, Derek. Continuing with news this afternoon, Wisconsin Republicans are introducing a bill that would increase the penalty for performing an abortion. It would also clarify medical procedures that don't qualify as abortions. Democratic Governor Tony Evers is almost certain to veto the measure if it gets to his desk. He has already promised to veto another GOP bill that creates exceptions for rape and incest. A teen accused of first-degree intentional homicide appeared in La Crosse County Court because of a bond violation. 19-year-old Sage Hickey was on Zoom in court. According to online records, a citation was filed in Juneau County for underage drinking last Tuesday, and being in Juneau County was a violation of his bond condition. Judge Elliot Levine warned Hickey during the hearing. I'm glad it sounds like there's discussions going on, but until it gets resolved, you cannot violate these rules. I'm telling you one more time, if I see anything come across, it's going to likely at issue of tapius. Hickey is accused of killing, shooting and killing 15-year-old Storm Von Drashek last summer. Hickey claims it was self-defense. He's out on a $10,000 cash bond. 
Dozens of protesters rallied outside the La Crosse County Courthouse. They're calling for justice in the case of a six year old Madari boy found dead in his home in February. The protesters come as 31 year old Josie Dykeman faces multiple charges, including intentional homicide for the death of the young Ag Alex Xavier Pedrin. Pedrin's grandmother organized today's protests and say more will come as the case moves through the courts. It's not the first time around she's abused children and it needs to stop. No other child should endure this or any type of abuse. And that's why we're going to keep his name alive. Justice for Alex Xavier. District Attorney Tim Grenke says Dykeman has been charged for child neglect twice before. Dykeman is being held on a $1 million cash bond and is in court today for a preliminary hearing. A carpenter from Minnesota is using his woodworking skills to help rebuild the famous Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris after a devastating fire tore through the roof four years ago. CBS's Ian Lee has the story from London. When flames engulfed Notre Dame in 2019, the French president vowed to resurrect the iconic cathedral within five years. Four years in, Architects are celebrating a huge step toward restoration, raising a portion of the new roof. You can see through the plumb bob. With help from Minnesota carpenter Peter Henriksen, who says it feels like a trip back in time. He's using some of the same tools and techniques of his medieval predecessors. I think it's amazing that people in 1100 could do all this. While it would be faster to use power tools, workers say doing it by hand pays tribute to the craftsmanship of the cathedral's original builders. It's a little mind-bending sometimes. Think about there were medieval carpenters cutting this, basically the same joint 900 years ago. Artisans are using some modern technology to speed up reconstruction, like these computer images, to ensure their hand-chiseled beams fit together perfectly. The traditional carpenters had a lot of that in their head. They had sketches. Henriksen is working alongside mostly French craftsmen and says it's an honor to help bring this historic landmark back to life. Ian Lee, CBS News. French officials cut down more than 1,000 historic oak trees in some 200 forests across the country to rebuild the cathedral's fire-ravaged roof and iconic spire. Coming up after the break, the debt ceiling bill heads for a full house vote today after barely getting out of committee. That in your consumer news coming up next. U.S. stocks had a mixed closing to kick off the shorter trading week. The Dow fell 50 points, though the Nasdaq rose 41 points and the S&P 500 gained less than a point. CBS News' Chanel Call has the latest business news headlines from New York. Today, the U.S. House of Representatives is set to vote on a bill to raise the country's borrowing limit. The measure barely cleared the House Rules Committee yesterday with a vote of 7 to 6. Both the White House and Republican House Speaker Kevin McCarthy have expressed optimism that their deal can become law by June 5th, despite some lawmakers voicing opposition to it. A New York federal appeals court has issued a ruling to shield the billionaire Sackler family from lawsuits tied to their business Purdue Pharma and the role its drug OxyContin played in fueling the opioid crisis. The decision allows for a bankruptcy deal to resolve cases brought by states, victims and other claimants. The family agreed to pay around $6 billion as part of the settlement. The company will also restructure and use some of its profits to fund treatment and other programs to fight addiction. And Minnesota is now the 23rd state to legalize recreational marijuana. The state's governor, Tim Walt, signed a bill yesterday that will allow adults 21 and older to possess marijuana, create a regulatory framework for cannabis retailers and manufacturers, and expunge low-level marijuana offenses. The new law takes effect on August 1st. That's your CBS News Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Chanel Call.
That's it for your afternoon consumer news. As we head to break, here is a live look at the New York Stock Exchange. Stay with us. More news is next. A rising number of pregnant women are dealing with diabetes and the risk of heart disease following a cancer diagnosis. CBS's Natalie Brand has a look at some of the day's top health stories. Diabetes in women who give birth is on the rise. The CDC looked at data from all births registered in the U.S. between 2016 and 2021 and found a 27 percent increase in the diagnosis of diabetes in women before they became pregnant. Mothers 40 and older and those who are overweight each had the highest rate of diabetes. The CDC says diabetes in pregnant women increases the risk to infants of fetal death and several birth defects. Scientists in Austria have found a link between obesity and mental health. The study looked at inpatient hospitalizations between 1997 and 2014. They found an obesity diagnosis significantly increases the likelihood of having a mental disorder across all age groups. Those disorders range from depression to nicotine addiction to anxiety. Women were seen as having an increased risk for most of the disorders studied. Cancer survivors who don't quit smoking give themselves a higher probability of heart attack, stroke and death due to cardiovascular disease. Research published in the European Heart Journal found smokers have nearly double the risk as those who never smoked or quit smoking. The study found more than 40 percent of those who smoked before their cancer diagnosis continued to smoke afterwards. Those are some of the day's top health stories. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. That is it for our medical news today. Here is a look at CityCam 8. Derek is in next with our forecast. Air quality alert indices are looking a little high, so that's why we do have this advisory out in effect here, mainly for our eastern communities. This does include La Crosse County as well until 11 p.m. tonight. That's because the ozone pollution is expected to be near the surface, causing some unhealthy conditions here for those sensitive groups, including children, uh, older adults, and of course, those with asthma. You may want to go ahead and stay inside as much as you can today. Limit the time outside. And in other words, uh, we also have a few clouds here across City Cam 8 and downtown La Crosse. Current temperatures at 86 degrees. Downtown, low temperatures at 85, maybe slightly cooler. South winds at around 11 miles an hour. River stage, 8.25 feet. That is dropping along the Mississippi. Temperatures in Eau Claire, 87 degrees. Slightly gusty here. 22 mile per hour wind gusts uh, coming up from the south, southeast around 14 sustained. Uh, Chippewa River stage is at 7. 759 and uh, that's 0.9 as well and that is holding steady. Current air temperatures across the region mainly into the 80s right now. We got uh, 88 in Sparta, 89 just shy of 90. Black River Falls, 86 will feel a little bit warmer. Much uh, cooler there in Winona. We're seeing some of that rain cooled air. There's some rain here which we'll get to here in just a bit. Uh, how big to lower those temperatures down a little bit. Forecast highs today expected to reach the upper 80s to low 90s in many spots today around the Cooley region. So we have that southerly wind breeze that we're working off of here and you can see there are some spots around the central and uh, midwestern United States dealing with a couple of light rain showers and a few thunderstorms. Here's some of those rain showers that we're talking about causing those temperatures to lower. We call that rain cooled air effect and you can see it moving into the general direction of Wabasha County but weakening though at the same time. The rest of us today mix of clouds and sunshine temperatures into the 80s low 90s by 5 p.m. and then by 7 o'clock 85 degrees with a few leftover clouds that could linger across the area and again that subtly wind breeze continuing across much of the Cooley region as well. Some showers and thunderstorms to the west should stay away here from us and then as we head into tonight maybe a slight chance of a shower near the Chippewa Valley temperatures into the 60s and 70s uh, late tonight and as we head into early tomorrow morning we will see the mixed clouds and sun temperatures already starting into the 70s thanks to that east to southeast wind breeze there. Scattered showers maybe a couple of thunderstorms that could pop up here as we head into late tomorrow afternoon and that will continue into the evening before dissipating as we head into tomorrow night with only a leftover slight chance of a shower that could be possible. We will have additional rain chances in the forecast though for Friday. However, partly cloudy skies as we head into this weekend. Highs into the 80s and low temperatures mainly into the 50s and low 60s. So a couple of days there are some rain chances. I think we may get a break this weekend. That's the latest indications from the latest models uh, early next week. Monday we may have to be watching for another storm chance. I live in the upper portion of a house and so I've been feeling the oh, heat yeah. rising I could lately. Imagine. <laughs> yeah, that's that's never that's never good, especially on days like today. Yeah, you'll feel it. Thanks, Derek. <laughs>
The exclusive deal from Wisconsin State Parks and Forests to help you and your family plan your next adventure this weekend. We'll be right back. Thank you for watching News 8 Now. Expect more. As many are getting off a long weekend, it could be time to start planning next weekend's adventures. Saturday and Sunday marks Wisconsin's annual free fund weekend. Everyone can get into the state's 50 state parks and 15 state forests without a pass. You also don't need a fishing license during the two days. State parks and trails will be open from 6 in the morning to 11 at night. The DNR has more information about fishing clinics and regulations that will stay in place on its website. Stay with us, we'll have one more check of your forecast when we return. Partly cloudy skies for the rest of the day with highs in the low 90s. Looking at a chance of thunderstorms for tomorrow and Friday with highs into the upper 80s. Same can be said here for this weekend, except partly cloudy skies. They're still pretty warm with those upper 80 high temperature readings there. And then Monday, watching for another chance of showers and storms. Highs continue into the 80s, but a little cooler as we head into next week, though. Low temperatures mainly into the 50s and 60s. So enjoy today and, uh, you know, just keep the umbrella handy tomorrow and Friday. Not and hopefully everyone's <laughs> AC is working. Yeah, oh, if it's not, yeah. <laughs> Good trouble. luck. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. And thank you for watching News 8 Now. You can catch us again at 5 and 6. Have a great afternoon.